Good afternoon, Black Health Matters family. Are you getting hungry yet? Well, you're gonna love this next segment. We have a healthy cooking segment with Chef Aaron McCargo. Again, my name is Leslie Fontenot. I'm the Managing Director for Black Health Matters. And we're happy to be joined by Chef Aaron. So I'm gonna give you some little, a little tip on nutrition. And as many of you know, good nutrition is vital for maintaining a healthy lifestyle. It aids in the prevention of certain diseases and also helps with the maintenance of overall health. Not to mention making home cooked meals and spending time in the kitchen can be a great stress relief tool for many adults, especially at this time. So who we, we have Chef Aaron McCargo Jr. today. He's competed on and won season four of the Next Food Network Star, beating out thousands of culinary hopefuls for the ultimate dream job, his own Food Network show. Big Daddy's House premiered and ranked as the number one show in the Kitchen Weekend segment during its initial six episode run. On Big Daddy's House, Aaron shared his passion for big, bold flavors and fun family cooking. From comfort foods to barbecue favorites to breakfast delights, Aaron whips up mouth-watering recipes inspired by many years of culinary experience and his fun-loving family while bringing a down-to-earth vibe and warm smile to the kitchen. So I'd like you to join me in welcoming Chef Aaron. I feel hungry already. So I look forward to um, participating in your cooking demonstration. And I know our, base, our Black Health Matters family looks forward to it as well. Thank you. How y'all doing? I'm telling you, I'm hungry. I had a crustable and a glass of water. So I hope that someone's in the mood for some catfish today. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a lot of fun doing this Black Health Matters demo because I'm coming to you with something that's totally different and untraditional, which is going to be a black and tan catfish, which is going to be a pan seared catfish. And then we're going to have a lemon pepper orzo. And then I also got some purple kale that I want to saute and give you just a really simple side dish to go along with this big bowl flavored dish. And because I love you so much, I'm going to finish off with a little bit of a like avocado tomato salsa to go right along top of that crab. I mean, no, not crab. I'll put some crab meat in it along that catfish. So just to run down some of the ingredients and talk to you about some of the things we're gonna be doing. A lot of times for me, when folks talk about healthy eating and changing lifestyles, it's not so much about the type of things you're doing or eating, it's more about the quantities, the salt and the sugar. So for me, I have my brand of sauce and spice that I use. And I wanna just introduce this to you guys so you'll know exactly why I'm gonna be using this and why I find it important to use in my daily lifestyle of cooking. And one thing about this sauce is because it doesn't have a lot of sodium. And that's one of the problems that I tend to have when I was cooking and in restaurants and when you're dining out, it's too salty, which leads to hypertension and high blood pressure and a thirsty mouth. So what I have here, as you can see, is just the sauce. So you'll see what's going in to this dish. This is really just simple, good flavors, chopped garlic, some citrus, lemon juice. We have some herbs, some peppers, very little sodium, no salt, but salt that's in some of our blends, but no salt added directly to this. And that to me is what makes this one of those things that you can use. Now when we're talking about the sauce because the recipe gets easy after you see why I have the sauce and I also have the spice. Now this is the sister and brother team that's going on here, this is the dry version, this is the wet version. Now if you wanna know the difference and wanna know what you can do with this, this goes on any and everything that you will put this in or, or on. So we're talking about this dry spice. Firstly, popcorn, French fries, sauteed asparagus, sauteed kale, cabbage, baked fish, fried fish, fried chicken, the list goes on and on and on. When we're talking about the sauce, which is the liquid formula, you can scramble your eggs, but you, you can also add this in your eggs. You can saute your fish in this. You can boil and marinate your steaks or fish. Great for those that are on turkey burger or chicken burger kicks. You add this and it adds moisture to your burger, also flavor. So as you can see on this table, and I'm hoping you can catch all the ingredients, and if you don't have it, you should have the recipe, and I really want you to dive into that so you'll know exactly what we're doing here. So I have me my spice, the spicy one, and I'm adding some cayenne pepper and smoked paprika. So when you're talking about 
that Cajun blend of spices. The paprika is going to give you that color. The cayenne is going to give you the heat. Now, traditionally, you'll have a lot of salt, pepper, granulated garlic and onion powder. We don't have all that because everything is pretty much, it's looking for me, in this. So what I want to do is just go ahead and get me some gloves on and get my pan on because I want to get this nice and hot. Um, catfish. I'm a farm-raised guy. I'm not a farm-raised guy. I'm a wild guy. You can get farm-raised or you can get yourself some uh, wild caught. Wild caught tends to be a little bit more flavorful to me, but to each his own. Farm-raised, a little bit more fatty because they got them on a special feed. When we're talking about any type of seafood, whether it's uh, farm-raised or wild, the difference is you'll get that natural eating, that natural flavor, be it salmon, tuna, grouper, Chilean sea bass. You'll get that natural, really, that type of fish taste to it. It won't be as bland and neutral, which you will get with farm-raised fish. So we got our orzo here for our lemon pepper orzo. And I just want you to see, this is pretty much a really go-to for me in my house when I'm talking about doing something different and simple. Now, I just take the orzo, you give it like a two to one, three to one ratio, like you're cooking rice. And this right here is pretty much what you want, a nice tender rice texture, which if you want it a little softer, go a little softer. But we're going to add some other ingredients to this, some heavy cream, some mascarpone cheese, which is an Italian cream cheese, some lemon juice, lemon zest, black pepper, and some chives. So it's just going to come alive and also the sauce and the spice, just like this catfish is. So I have this sitting here, and as you can see, it's going to get starchy. So I'm going to add a little stock to this, and then I'm going to put it to the side because I want to start while I'm working a catfish, I'm gonna work the kale. And I'm really doing all this so you can see how you can get a good meal in 20 minutes once you have your prep all taken care of. And, um, and that's the hardest part about cooking anything. And when you're trying to eat healthy or not is making sure that you prep first because then everything else is in moderation after that. So I'm gonna sit this off to the back. And I'm gonna bring up my wok, my favorite wok. And I got this going really high. And I'm just going to add a little bit of oil. I got some red onions in here. Now I got to, you can go with a cup of red onions or two cups of red onions and very little oil because what we want to do is sweat these onions. We're not looking for caramelization. We're looking for a nice sweat down of the onions because we want the sweetness to balance out with the kale and the sharpness and tartness of that. So I'm cranking down my fire on here because I can see my pan is getting hot. Now, one thing when you go into blacking, a lot of folks, put oil in the pan. That's a big no-no. You want to oil your fish first, put your season on second, and then go ahead and put it in the pan. That's going to give you that nice black sear. So in this bowl, I got my catfish here. And as you can see, I got me some really nice, lean catfish, no bones. I'm going heavy because I know that somebody out there besides me loves cat love catfish. And I love the fact that when you do get catfish, it's one of those things that you can really fill up one fast because it's such a lean protein type fish that you really have fun with it. So onions are working and sweating. Catfish, little canola oil, grapeseed oil, co uh, coconut oil. Go with an oil that's a really, that has a high smoking point. That means once it hits this pan, it's going to really be able to get a nice sear and crunch, uh, crunch on it, or crust as we say. And you don't have to worry about it really burning really bad because it's not going to burn. It's just going to allow everything to cook evenly. If you get yourself butter or olive oil, something like that, which doesn't have a great smoking point, unless you're working with a light, light, light olive oil, you'll find yourself having a lot of burnt grease in your pan. And that's not what we want. So I have my catfish here, lightly oiled. I'm going to go ahead and add my spice to this. And like I said, with this Cajun blend, cayenne, smoked paprika, and a little bit of the spice here. I just want to go ahead and get this coated. Um, you're not looking to, to have this like really heavenly season. So I like to save some of the season if you're making this recipe or when you do make the recipe, you'll know to save some of this. Because I like to always add a little bit of extra seasoning on the end of my product as well as while it's cooking. And I want this to really have a lot of punch and it's not offensively hot. So be careful and watch out for the cayenne pepper because the spicy blend itself this is really spicy. It's just got a little kick and a lot of smokiness. So pan is hot. Fish has that nice mahogany color to it. And I see a couple pieces. But because we're cooking in real time, 
Some of them are a little bashful and don't have enough season to them. So feel free to add as you go. And I'm always in teach mode because I want you to understand that, you know, we got one hand clean. I didn't dump everything in here because I don't want to have my fish contaminate my spice. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay this in just like that. Now, of course, I want to make sure I got my pan up high enough that I do get that sear, but I'm using a hard anodized pan. If anybody's curious about the type of pan, because this is going to give me that even cooking and also give me that balance heat that I need as far as how hot the pan is. So I got my fish in. We don't need to play around with fish when you're blacking, whether you're blacking chicken, fish, um, uh, steaks, things of that nature. You really don't want to go and move it around a lot because now you're just disturbing the trust that you will possibly get because there's so much action. We really want to get that really nice dark blackness on it. So this is going to go. And while that's working, I got my onion sweat sweating, or better yet, they done ran around the block and got a heavy, a heavy sweat because it's starting to do what I didn't want it to do, which is saute. I'm going to add this purple kale in here. And the reason I chose purple kale because I want a little color. And I want to show you that this is a very versatile sauce and seasoning blend that we're going to use to make food tasty and to be a little bit healthier. So I got my kale in. And if you see me sweating, it's because of two things. I'm really, really hungry or because it's really, really hot in here. But we is turning up the heat in here today. And I'm just going to work this kale just like this with those onions. Like I said, the sweetness of it, the uh, onions, the tartness and the bitterness of the kale. You can cook this kale as soft or as uh, not as soft as you want, depending on your teeth work. <laughs> so if you've got some benches, you might want to go ahead and let it go down a little bit lower to almost mushy. So I'm going to go ahead and work this tail like this. This is looking good. Now, when I was talking about seasoning and flavoring food, I like to flavor and season and taste as I go. So this right here just has the onions. It just has the kale. And like I do at home, I always go for the sauce because I like to show you just how it just bounces back and forth from one dish to the other with no stress. So I got a good heaping tablespoon. And this is a concentrate. So I'll let you know that when you're eating this or you taste it for the first time, you might be taken back like, whoa, this got some punch to it. I taste the garlic. I do taste a hint of salt. I taste the acid, but this is something that's supposed to be divvied out throughout the week. So you're not overwhelming yourself with trying to eat the whole jar in one day, which you possibly might try to do, because we do do that. You get a paper towel because I am getting hot in here, literally. Woo! I'm hoping you can see this kale, the onions, the colors, and when you see it next to the salmon, salmon, catfish, and the orza, you'll see why I'm using it. Thank you, sir. Oh, mom, a man. The thing I didn't wear a wig is that. So, catfish time. Oh, yeah. Look at this, folks. You see how we get that crust on here? Can you see that? And this is just a couple of minutes. We don't have to go in the oven with this. We're going to go all the way through. And it's a nonstick pan, which is another bonus. You can do this in a cast iron pan. You can. You can do it in a saute pan that you have at home. But I'm using this pan and try not to really take in the smell because once you take in that heat, you'll get that cough from the smoked paprika, but mainly from the cayenne pepper. So now we just go ahead and let this go down and finish cooking. Because we've been taught, and I know from a child, when you cook things, it automatically goes in the oven. We don't always have to do that, folks. We can really get things cooked from beginning to end on top of your stove. So you can lock in that moisture and not dry it out with the oven heat. So that's one of the things I like to do when it comes to having fish on my stove or chicken breast or seafood or any protein. It's really let it finish on top of the stove and just control your heat. So we got the kale going. And I'm hoping you can see that the color of the purple really just went away, but you can really see that intense color when you're looking close, but it really will look pretty sharp next to a white lemon pepper orzo 
which we're about to drop into right now. So, kale, a little tasty. Ooh. Ooh. I'm about to take a mug shot next to this thing. Yes. Oh, no. At this point, this is the texture I like. I normally take my pill. Let it, let it continue to bleed out some of that juice. Continue to break down the, the, the texture of it so it can get a lot more tender for those that want it tender. And now I jump right into my orzo. And it's funny I'm making this dish because this is just how I do this at home, which I am at home. But it's good to be able to show you folks just how simple and easy it is when you're at home, when you have the ingredients in front of you. It's no stress, no fuss. Now you can see I'm starting to move this fish around like this, so it's getting a good shape on it. Can y'all see this really good? The color and everything? Perfect. Orza, we got heavy cream. You know I only got about a quarter cup in here, right? I'm gonna open a new container. But I think you guys are real, you understand. So I'm gonna add my heavy cream in. And if you're thinking, hey, where's the healthy part of this? You're using heavy cream. You're using catfish, you've used oil, you're going to use mascarpone. Well, the fact of the matter is, when I'm done this, someone's going to really catch on and understand one thing I don't have out here, two things. But we'll get to that at the end, because I really want to talk to you about how we're going to add just a little bit of this mascarpone, which is going to bring it out that creaminess. This is really creamy. And as we start to work this in with that orzo, you should start to understand that this is too easy to be real because you got mascarpone, you have your heavy cream, very little. We could turn this fire down very low. And then we're gonna go into getting some lemon zest in here. And this is a zester. I had a student some time ago come and say, Chef, I use that on my feet. I'm like, well, if you're using this on your feet, don't use this on your lemons and your orzo, okay? I'm just letting you know. You won't have me coming over. So I'm just going to get a good amount of zest. And when I talk about a good amount of zest, maybe this whole lemon of zest is going to go in here. Because we're talking about lemon pepper orzo, and I've always said, when you're out dining, and when you read the menu, and whatever it says, it should be in that dish. So this is going to have that very, very strong lemon punch and flavor to it. And if you didn't know this, most of the oils, all of the oils and most of the flavor in essence is in the outside. So when you buy your citrus, make sure you do one of two things. First, wash it off because you want to definitely wash and then dry it so that it can zest easily. And now we're going to just stir in that zest and start adding all the rest of the ingredients that's in the recipe. So I got my lemon juice. I have some black pepper here. And this is coarse cracked black pepper. Use as much or as little as you want. And I like a lot of black pepper. Once again, lemon, pepper, or so. I got a little bit of the spice. That's going to be my seasoning. Give it a good stir. This is going to look like, almost like a rice pudding if you're wanting. So what the, what's the texture? It should be a nice rice pudding. And it will tighten up on you because if you don't know anything about orzo, it's a pasta. So as it continues to cook and absorbs water, it does what? Swell. So anytime you have flour on chicken, flour in your, um, as far as pasta, pizza dough, the water is what activates it and causes it to swell. So right now, this pasta is starting to absorb that lemon juice, that heavy cream, the black pepper flavor, and the zest. Now I gotta go back to my friend here. What did I do with my friend's school? Did I leave it somewhere? Oh! Play games on me. A little bit of the sauce. And we're going to give this a good stir. And the last thing to really go in here is Parmesan cheese. So this is one of those dishes when we serve it in restaurants, when I serve it at home, we're talking about still eating healthy and making sure that health is the primary reason why we're making good food. 
You don't need a big whopping whole big bowl of this. Now, if you do eat the whole bowl, it won't be your first time or your last because I've done that before. But I just want to let you know, it's just a little something to go aside the catfish. Now, I'm going to give this catfish, just like you do a steak for those that cook, when you want to give it that test, this is the same test with any seafood, chicken, protein, you name it. Give it the push test. So you see how this still has some push and some, some, so this part is a little leaner. You see that? This is softer. So the firmer it is, the more done it is. So what you want to do is get it to about a medium push, because that lets you know that as we let this rest, which we're going to do, it's going to continue to cook, but it's going to continue to retain its moisture and stay juicy. The one thing you don't want to have is dried fish. Now, I'm a white and fried fish eating brother, but I like to have it with a little moisture to it. And you can see that this, speaking of moisture, it's coming together really good here. So let me go ahead. Oh, I got dishes today. So I'm not trying to be doing all the dishes. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Marcus Cone Marcus spoon. If you can't find Marcus Cone, get cream cheese. Don't panic. Get whipped cream cheese because you want it to break down. But don't go crazy saying I can't find it. I can't make it. Yes, you can. And yes, you better. Mm. 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 Y'all gonna make me come out of my boots and my boot shirt today. Woo! Well worth the heat. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Fire off. One. Fire off. Two. Let me show you something real close. That's out of here. That's resting. Do me a favor when you're cooking, and I can't stress this enough. You're saying, Chef, why let it rest? It's hot, it's flavorful, I'm gonna dig in it. It's gonna to continue to keep this heat. You can always go back in the oven, in your air fryer, not the microwave, and go ahead and get that crispiness and get the heat back on it. But what we really wanna do is get that juice of the protein to settle back out from end to end. Because right now it's puffed up in the middle. And once it starts to settle and rest, it starts to even out and go from end to end. Middle tip. When you're buying or eating steak, you go to a restaurant. I always tell folks, cut your steak from the end first, because if it's pink or for medium, or a little bit redder for medium rare, from end to end, it should be the same temperature that you order. It should just be red in the middle. A lot of folks are used to cutting in the middle. I say, don't do that. Go right in, cut the ends, see that temperature that you ordered. And if it's not, send it back. Don't tell them I told you so. Don't tell them I told you so. In this bowl, tomatoes diced fine. Can you see this? Really good. You got the red onions diced fine. Avocados, chopped cilantro. We're gonna play the same song again. It's like having Earth, Wind, and Fire. The whole 23 tracks playing. And all you keep hearing is that tune, but you know it's a different song. And I'm going with a heaping spoon of the actual sauce. Fish is starting to calm down. I want the lemon juice because I've already used the zest. So I'm just going to go ahead and add just a little bit of juice for the acid. And you can serve this mixture that I'm making on top of grilled chicken using the sauce or using the spice. You can serve it with tortilla chips. You can serve this on top of your tacos. So this has a lot of places to play in your cooking once you get this. And this is literally five ingredients. Tomatoes, onions, avocados, the sauce, and cilantro. If you want to throw in the lemon juice as an ingredient, go for it. And we want to give this a nice, easy mix. So some might call this, I call this like avocado tomato salsa, but I make this a lot because when you're talking about eating healthy, you want to have some type of sauce or something to go on top of your fish. You want to have it to go on top of your chicken. Sometimes we go for the wrong thing, but when you have the sauce and the spice, and you have these things laying around. Like I had one tomato, real talk, a half an onion, and I had some cilantro. And I was like, you know what? Let me just top the fish with that little something fresh, little something clean. This is not just about summertime or springtime, but this is about any time of the year. And I literally make this a lot. And I add this on my tacos. I add it to a steak salad. I make a cob salad. I put this on top of a Caesar salad. Whichever way you want to go with this, you can, because it's really just about having that fresh look and taste. And as you can see, this is it, folks. 
This is what it's all about. Catfish, lemon pepper orzo, a little bit of tomato, avocado, salsa, and we also have our kale with sauteed caramelized onions. Now I'm gonna give this a taste as well. I get this question all the time. Every time you cook, it's so good. Well, not to pat myself on the back, but every time I cook, I taste as I go. <laughs> so I don't want to be embarrassed by no means by myself or anybody I'm feeding. Mm. 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 I'm going to do a push-up, but I won't. <laughs> I won't. Okay, done. Let's go ahead and finish down. Look at this, folks. You see the creaminess of this? This should last you or feed easily 10 to 12 people. Because when I show you the portion size, because that's one of the things I want to stress to folks, it's not about the heavy cream, not about the oil, not about the fact that you're using pasta. It's more about your portion size and how much sodium and unnecessary stuff you're putting in your food. And that's the way I look at food. It's always been my approach. It will always be my approach. And it's just gotten better because I have the sauce and the spice to do so. So plate here. I'm hoping you'll be able to see the firmness of this fish because they're all at the same. Y'all don't want to play with me today. Y'all don't want to play with me today. Fish out. Right here. I'm hoping, is anybody watching me? Or is it a funeral? Is it a moment of silence going on because everyone's excited to see what's going to happen? Because I know I'm excited about this. Orzo, let's put the cheese in. Let's put the chives in. Let's get a nice stir. And this heats up well. So when you heat this up, if you have some leftover, little water or chicken stock, if you're wondering what I cook this in, I use chicken stock, but you can cook your orzo in just simple sink water. Don't go bananas trying to recreate the wheel and get bottled water or filter, whatever. Just water. So you can see the chives are bringing about that color. Someone's wondering, if I did eat the whole thing, would it be a problem? No, no, it wouldn't. And I would see why and it would be justified. Kel. Lovely, 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 lovely. Saute kale, onions, the sauce, that's it. A little bit of kale right here. Because it's all about portioning the right size. Even though it looks good and you want it all, you shouldn't have it all. Let's go a little bit of that orza. You see the cheese in this? Can you see the can you, can you see the cheese in this? The creaminess. I don't know if y'all getting this right. Yeah, y'all feeling it? Okay, just making sure. So when I'm thinking about and talking about healthy eating, it doesn't say leave out the flavor. It says leave out the salt. And as you can see, while I was making this, I brought no salt to the table at all. I'm just going to knock a little bit of this salsa, which you can go really crazy with having as much or as little as this as possible. Because it's not going to take away from the catfish flavor of the Cajun seasoning. And I didn't sprinkle any of the extra seasoning on this because I knew that when I put that season on that fish, because I know the flavor of the spice and I know the intensity of the cayenne and the smoked paprika, I knew where I was going with this already. So here I have a moment that everyone gets mad. Salté kale with caramelized red onions, lemon pepper orzo, black and tan, Cajun catfish, and that tomato avocado, salsa, but you better take a picture of this right now. 
because this ain't gonna be like this very long. It's gonna be a real ugly picture for about a couple minutes. I told y'all I had just a crust of it. Did you get that? Now, I'm gonna turn this around because one thing that makes me love catfish, and if you don't like catfish, once you try this recipe, you will, is the fact that you can't see this too good, but let me just go ahead and rip this open. It's so flaky and it's still very moist because we let it rest. Resting is the key on top of having the sauce and the spice, but resting is the key. I'm gonna taste the fish by itself. Catfish tacos. Catfish tacos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Leslie, you missing out. Oh yeah. The kale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now all together. With the salsa. I'm gonna tell you what happened just now. My mouth just told my mouth. Tell him stop talking so we can eat more. The lemony taste inside of the orzo. The creaminess. And when I'm telling you, this is the portion size that you will need and desire and be just comfortable with. I mean that because it's all about that big, bold flavors. Folks, I don't know, I can't see you, but you can see me. The sauce, the spice, and very basic, simple ingredients. I didn't do anything else, just these two. That's it, that's it. And if you don't think the flavor is what I'm telling you, try it. You got the recipe. But when we're talking about eating healthy, once again, you can change the fish out to tilapia or to halibut or to whatever fish you work or like with, to work with, as long as it's a firm fish. You don't have to saute. You can sprinkle the seasoning in your air fryer or right into your oven. You got options. Also, if you don't do the fish thing, Cajun use some tofu or use that same Cajun spice over some Brussels sprouts or asparagus and still have just the orzo and the kale. Double veggie, one on the carbs, you're good. You can actually go ahead and take this salsa mix, which I'm gonna add some crab meat to this and serve this over a bed of lettuce or in lettuce wraps because it's made with the sauce and the spice. The shelf life on this is three to four days. The shelf life on this orzo is 30 minutes when we're done. And the shelf life on that catfish is half of that time. But you do have more than enough to feed a family four to six. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. I hope you enjoy the recipe. I hope you do the recipe because it'll make me proud to see you post this on Facebook if you're following me to find out how good it turned out for you because it's, it's the bomb. Any questions? You better talk because I'm going to keep eating. Uh, after the intro, will we get some spice recipes? What's that again? After the intro, will we get some spice recipes? Oh, yeah, you can get a ton of spice recipes. I, I gave you four right now, but yes, I got you covered. Okay, what seasoning brand or the recipe or the recipe for the seasoning? What is the, the brand of it? The brand of the seasoning? Yeah, and the sauce. It's the McCargo brand, AaronMcCargo.com. You can get the spicy version. You can get a non-spicy version. You can get the sauce. Can you see this good? That's the original. Or you can get the seafood. And I'm telling you what, when you get the seafood, you treat it like the original. You want to make clams and spaghetti? Add the sauce, the seafood sauce to it. You want to do some sauteed crabs? Add the sauce to it. You want to do a fast shrimp scampi? Add the sauce to it. You want to do mussels with red sauce or white sauce? Add the seafood sauce to it. I'm trying to make everything convenient and easy while we're home during this pandemic time and afterwards. I want you to know that it's so easy to get in the kitchen with the sauce and the spice. Now, I'm not just saying because I use it every day, all day, but it just flavors your food and it takes all the stress of having to go in a cabinet with 30,000 spices and figure out how you want to have consistency. This is the consistency in my house. Any other questions? How do I get this recipe for this cooking segment? This recipe will be posted. And if it's not posted, with Black Health Matters. So you will be able to retrieve this recipe today. So you don't have to wait for me. You can have this recipe, go get the ingredients. If you don't have the sauce and the spice, order it. My team gets it out as soon as possible. So you should be making this within the next seven days. 
where can we watch you make more dishes? If you want to watch me, follow me on my Facebook page, Chef Aaron Cargo, or you can catch me on Instagram. Either way, I'm doing videos normally on Wednesdays. You'll catch me. Um, but sometimes I get the moment like today, and we have Black Health Matters, and I'm doing something like this, and hopefully someone's tuning in that didn't even know that they would get to catch this. Why did you use Nolan's Catfish? Nolan's Catfish? Oh! Hey, Nolan's a, a, a catfish that I killed on Christmas for a buddy of mine, Jerome. And it was his birthday, so I happened to butcher that thing up and make something delicious. But catfish is one of those things that, for me, is, is good in omega-3s. It's very great tasting when you get a wild-caught one. But you can get yourself a farm fresh, uh, farm fresh uh, fish. And also, if you're buying catfish and can't find it fresh, do not be turned off by getting frozen catfish. That's probably one of the only fishes I would tell, or fish types of fish, I would say, go ahead and get frozen. And it will serve the same purpose. Just let it dry. And whenever you're blackening anything, I forgot to mention this, make sure you pack dry it very good. Sprinkle the seasoning on. Well, we said the oil, then the seasoning. Because if you have too much water in there, you won't get that black sear crust like we have. Can he show the recipe and grocery list? Yes, we, we should have that posted with Black Health Matters because they have the grocery list, a picture of that. We also have a video that you will know how to have yourself prepped out. And of course, you'll have the recipe. Did, did you use low se sodium seasoning? The, all I used was this right here, this spice. To me, it's very low sodium. Only way you'll find out to have it at home because this is one of those things. It's not like Laurie's. This is not a dodo. This isn't whatever brand of spice blend that's out there that when you put it in, it's loaded with salt and it hits you. This isn't a salt thing. I'm, I created this for folks like me that want big, bold flavor, but still want to have a hint of that salt flavor when that's not the dominating part of the spice blend. You will get the, the lemon, the pepper, the smoked pepper. You get all that good stuff and not salt. So if you go over, you don't have to say, oh, man, I got to throw it out. No, there is no making a mistake when you have the spice or the sauce. Just use it in moderation until you, uh, to your liking, until you get more familiar with it. And then you'll see that you'll go a little bit extra on top of right now. Right? I would have sprinkled the spice on all this after I put it. It wouldn't affect the dish at all, but bring out more flavor. What is the yellow item on your plate? The yellow item on my plate, the orzo. Oh, so this is the lemon pepper orzo. So this was the orzo that I made. We cooked the orzo pasta, which is a very small pasta, and some chicken stock. You can cook it in the water or low sodium chicken stock or veggie stock, it doesn't matter. We added the heavy cream, mascarpone cheese, which is an Italian cream cheese, the black pepper, the lemon zest, the lemon juice, and then we finished off with some Parmesan cheese and some chives. And of course, I put the sauce and the spice in there, but you can do one or the other. You don't have to do both. Although you did not add salt, will the mascarpone add to cholesterol level? Well, that's something you'll have to check with your dietitian and your, your personal physician about how much cholesterol and things will affect your diet. Because really, I go into really adding less salt to the food and more flavor. But when it comes to those type of detailed questions, I suggest you check with someone that's very more versed than I am. What are your social medias again? Uh, Chef McCargo and Chef Aaron McCargo. We got Instagram, Facebook, Wednesdays, or you can go to AaronMcCargo.com, order your sauce and your spice, and you can find out if I got recipes and videos there, which I think I do. We good? Everybody's happy? Someone's gonna try this. I don't know if you're shaking your head, but I hope someone's still watching. Hope I answered all your questions. And I think we made good timing to make a big mess of great food. You know, we're talking about, we got catfish for the family, kale, lemon pepper orzo. This is how I do it, folks. It's been a pleasure. Your boy, Aaron Cargo Jr. The only and original big daddy, creator of the sauce and the spice. Is there any other questions? How can we reach, how could we reach out to you? You can reach out through me through Facebook or Instagram. And you can also reach out through me by tuning in on Wednesdays when I'm doing my Facebook lives and shouting out saying you were one of the participants, the participants doing a Black Health Matters demo. And um, I'll show you some love. If you want to change the recipe to vegan, what do you want to, what would you recommend? What could you use vegetarian that will give you the fish-like texture? That's hard to say, but if you're talking about the fish-like texture, I would go with a medium soft tofu, but they also have some tempehs, um, which is a, a type of vegetarian substitute that you can find at Whole Foods or Wegmans. 
And they really have soft to medium to firm textures on that as well. And like I said before, this will take two. You can go ahead and get yourself some cauliflower and steam it and slice it in thick steaks because if you cut it raw, it's going to fall apart. But if you slightly steam it or blanch it, slice it down, pat dry it, sprinkle the season and sear it, you'll get the same thing. Portobello mushrooms, nice thing to add to this dish and, and, and substitute if you're a vegetarian and you don't want to go and do the fish or anything like that. But definitely you got the cauliflower, you have the portobello mushrooms, the tempeh, you have some options there. Well, that's one. What brand of orzo do you use and what is your, can you say your sauce and spice again? Sure. My sauce is the sauce, the original of the sauce. You can get the seafood, the sauce, and the spice is the spice. I want to keep it really simple and you can get the spice of the spice or you can get the original and you can get them from amacargo.com, my website. And the other question was brand of orzo. Brand of orzo. I'm a Barilla pasta guy. I happen to get Ronzoni. Ronzini, but I do have a roll. That was my backup. I had a little box left, so I didn't want to open up the Ronzini. But this is the pasta I use. I'm always using Barilla pasta because the texture of it is good. It holds up. And to me, I think that when you got a really good pasta, it really works with any type of sauce. It doesn't float and get really gooey and things of that nature. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Guess you guys are done with me. And I wish you a blessed rest of the day. Remember to live in the moment. I hope to catch you on Wednesday. Follow me on Instagram, Chef McCargo, and follow me on Facebook at H Chef Aaron McCargo. And it's been a pleasure. And thank you, Black Health Matters. And remember, folks, leave the salt out the diet, add the spice and the original, the sauce, and everything's going to be all right. Peace.